Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We are excited to be going live today with our Nashville team, as well as with um, Mikkel from Drink Elanita. It is a new sparkling mezcal that we have, and um, we are really excited to be doing this via rooms today. So we are just waiting for everybody to hop on. Hope you guys are doing well. We have a couple more Instagram lives coming up. We've got one with Comos Tequila tomorrow, and then we have one with Lobos Tequila um, and Ghost ghost tequila. I was about to say ghost pepper tequila and if you have tried it you will know why. So it looks like Empire Nashville has joined us and we are just waiting for a drink Alanita and then we will jump into a room and get started. So I hope everybody is having a wonderful April. The sun is shining today. It's been a beautiful day here and we are just hanging out waiting Hey, Lindsay, thanks for jumping on. I'm intrigued. Hey, Lindsay, <laughs> two Lindsays at the same time. Um, hi, guys, thanks for coming. I'm interested to know, has, has anyone tried Elanita sparkling mezcal or just mezcal in general? We had Sombra on um, last week. It was a very enlightening conversation um, about mezcal and where it comes from and so, I know in doing some research. Hey Shane, thanks for joining us. We um, are just hanging out. We are waiting for a minute for at Drink Elanita to hop on so we can jump into a room with our Nashville team and the Passion Fruit Paloma. Yes, Lindsay, that drink, the Drink Elanita um, Passion Fruit Paloma is delicious my personal favorite is that cucumber lime basil but i also really love cucumber and lime and basil as you can tell from my garden where there's a ton of basil hey empire memphis thank you for jumping on all right drink elanita has joined so hang on i'm gonna pop us into a room hang on one second this is very exciting to both of them and we should have everybody joining us shortly. We are so excited. That is Virginia. Hey, Mikkel. Hi, how's How your day going? It is going very well. How is yours? It's going really well as well over here in LA right now. Oh, so I have to imagine the sun is shining there. Yeah, it's pretty cold, honestly. I uh, really? can't wait to get back to Tennessee. Uh, but right. yeah, it's not so bad over here. <laughs> That's good. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. If you can just give us a little bit of a background on how you got into the spirits industry. And um, for those who don't know, Mikel is one of the co-founders for Elanita. And I'm just interested to know, how did you, did you have a love for Mezcal? Or what, what kind of got you guys started? Yeah, so basically, I'm, I'm from Mexico. I'm from Mexico City, born and raised most of my life. I only moved to the U.S. about four years ago. And I like to say I'm a, a recovering investment banker. So I used <laughs> to be a banker in my past life. Not very passionate about that. Was trying to see what to do with my life, something that I was more passionate about. And because I grew up in Mexico City, I grew up with a lot of mezcal in my life. I saw mezcal go from what it was 20 years ago, which was, uh, as a lot of people know, that beverage with a warm in it. Uh, a lot of the times we ask people, like, if they know mezcal, they're like, oh, is that the one with a warm? And we're like, well, that was a very good marketing stunt about 20 years ago. But now the new era of mezcal is actually very high quality sipping mezcal from many different types of agaves and from many different processes of distillation and, 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 and production. So. I, I was, or I am very passionate uh, uh, about mezcal since I was pretty young, like Mexico drinking age is 18. So let's say I started drinking mezcal at 18. Um, and then when I came to the US, we started seeing, or I met Jordan and I'll get into that in a little bit, but mm -hmm. I started seeing how the market, the mezcal market was growing in the US and some peculiarities about um, things that were kind of making the market not grow as fast 
as it should. And that's when I was like, eh, probably a good opportunity to go into that market. That's awesome. And I think it's, um, it's something that's interesting as you watch different categories kind of grow and from where they started from just, it's, it's great that you guys were able to look at that and say, Hey, let's, let's take advantage of this and really spread the word about, about Mezcal. Um, you founded it, you mentioned with Jordan, how did you guys meet and how did you come up with the idea of sparkling Mezcal? I'm sure it's not something that you're just sitting around and like, Hey, Let's no, add some so to this. <laughs> <laughs> basically, uh, we we actually met in business school. So okay. as I said, like I was trying what to figure out what to do with my life. So I was like, business school can kind of help. And then I arrive at business school and I meet this uh, very funny Canadian that also likes mezcal a lot. And I'm like, why does a Canadian love mezcal so much? But uh, we became really good friends. Uh, we drank mezcal a lot and he came from the oil and gas uh, business and he was like, um, I also want to do something a little bit more inspiring with my life. And we half kiddingly started uh, talking about starting our own mezcal brand. So the half kidding became to an actual research project in business school. And that's where we found uh, a lot of the peculiarities I was talking about with the mezcal industry. So first, it, it is the fastest growing spirit in all of the US. It's about 40 to 50% year over year growth. So that really caught our attention. But most importantly, it was three points. One, mezcal is quite expensive. So every bottle in the off premise was about 50, 60, $70 a bottle. And we're like, okay, that's a pretty high entry point for people that are just wanting to get into the category. Number two, we saw that there was zero to no brand affinity. So most people we asked about mezcal, they were like, oh, yeah, I love mezcal. I see it in cocktails. And they were like, oh, but, uh, tell us your favorite brand. Almost nobody could tell us a single mezcal brand. And then mm -hmm. finally, and most importantly, we saw that 90 to 95% of mezcal consumption in the U.S. happens through cocktails in bars and restaurants. So we're like, okay, so that means that most of these more than 500 brands of mezcal are actually selling just a cocktail ingredient and nobody's actually selling the finished product, right? So we're like, what if we actually combine uh, mezcal with the flavors that people already love and natural juices that all people already love and actually give the people what they want in, in the form of a sparkling mezcal with a very good entry price point. So it's $2.99 for a single can or $9.99 for a four pack. Um, and then and finally- that's retail, correct? That's like retail. if you were to go it's... buy it at a store. So just to, um, for my uh, our friends and customers who are listening, for specific pricing for your account categories, um, whether you're on-premise or off-premise, reach out to your sales rep for the best pricing. If you're not sure who that is, then you can DM us and we will get in touch. So um, exactly. I just wanted to clarify that for anybody watching it um, after after we go, after we post it. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Leon. We, yeah. we, we do have some really good entry uh, deals as we're just launching in Tennessee. Um, right. So uh, keep keep that in mind. But yeah, that was how, mm -hmm. how we basically Jordan and I saw that it was an awesome opportunity to actually start uh, Elenita, the first and only sparkling mezcal uh, in the market. And did you, when you were doing all of your research, were you sampling a ton of mezcals? Did you get to travel very much and, and kind of for like, you know, school trip research, was it like that? Or was it more really digging into the business side of it? No, definitely a lot of traveling, a lot of sampling. So uh, we were lucky we, because we were in school. Uh, it was obviously a very famous project because we were inviting between 10 and 20 people every week to either Jordan's house or my house to try different types of cocktails or sparkling cocktails or what could be the flavors that we were going to choose for Elenita. So we went through about 20 to 30 different types of flavors from like blood orange to hibiscus. And then obviously uh, pineapple, jalapeno, cucumber, lime, basil started to overperform uh, consistently. And then the strawberry mule and the passion fruit paloma were also very strong uh, performers in these tastings. But most importantly, and you touched on this, we started traveling a lot, right? So I got the opportunity to travel with Jordan and the rest of our team to Mexico City, to Oaxaca, to Guadalajara. And this was a huge part 
of what we actually, how we grew as a team. And when Jordan and I realized that's it, that this could be a real brand uh, and a real product that, that could do really well. Part of that team, a very good friend of ours, Elena, um, she's from Pasadena, from LA. She's very good at uh, what she does. She was helping us with, with the branding, with the marketing. And as we were traveling more and more to Mexico City, to Oaxaca, her personality started to evolve. When we started working together, she would be a little bit on the shy end, more quiet, not as outgoing. Uh, she was a little bit afraid of traveling to Mexico because it was just very dangerous. So we convinced her of coming, of actually seeing past that stereotypical, like, I don't know, like danger in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And her eyes were opened in a, in a huge way. There was this one night at Café Paraíso, a really nice uh, club in Mexico City, where we were had just learned so much about how mezcal is a euphoric. It's an upper, not a downer, like more spirits. Mm -hmm. And we were drinking mezcal. And then Elena started being a lot more outgoing, dancing, being happy, being funny. And we started calling her that night, Elenita, right? Uh, El Elena was inspired to see things differently and thus inspired us to do the same. So when it came time to actually name the brand, we really wanted to do it after the experience or the transformation that Elena had gone through to become Elenita. And that's why the traveling was important to get back to I the question. No, I love that. And that's, I, I haven't heard that story before. And I think that that's such a cool thing to be able to see that transformation. And I think right now we're, we're looking at um, a world where everybody's kind of seeing things differently. And um, we're having to kind of look at, you know, during the pandemic, everybody had to look at, okay, let, how do we pivot to, to um, recreate the world that we were in, but now from like a more virtual or um, a less getting to travel and do things like that. So what a cool story. And how, um, how blown away was she when you guys just told her what you were going to name the product? Did she kind of see it coming or was she completely caught she, off guard? She, she was happy. We were discussing it. It was on the table. She was trying not to push it too hard right. because obviously she had conflicting interests <laughs> right. but uh we genuinely and organically came to the decision that this was the best it's also very close to us it's a mm -hmm. it's part of how elenita uh, we like to say unearth her true spirit right a uh, mezcal is yeah. cooked underground for more than uh for around eight to ten days so we like that term unearth your true spirit mm -hmm. and uh, it's part of our story so that's why we chose uh, this name. And uh, it, it's obviously grown on us and we've gotten great feedback from everybody out in the market. It's, it's a phenomenal product. And I wanna talk about that now. Um, I've had the opportunity to try all of um, the different types that you guys have. You can see them on the screen there. Um, I, I'd love to know a little bit about the mezcal that you use when you're making it and how you guys are producing it. Yes, um, that's that's my uh, area of focus. Um, <laughs> I, as I said, like growing up with mezcal, I saw the mezcal industry go from mezcal when I was growing up in Mexico. It, it's it's more than two hundred years old or or even more, but it wasn't really commercialized, right? When I was I don't know ten, fifteen, uh, eighteen years old, it was this one liter bottle and plastic bottle that we would say if you drink that, you'd go blind. But then as the years progressed and companies like Brujo, like Amores um, and several others started to see the potential of what it would be like of having a real good mezcal uh, could be out in the market. So I started to learn, even without working on it, I started to learn a lot about it. So when the time came, I already knew some of it, but we did the good thing of understanding our blind spot and we... I talked with Jordan to a lot of the professionals or most respected professionals in the mezcal world in Mexico. And we brought them into our team to help us, uh, to help us with the production and to teach us how we could do all of this. So one big part we say is like their intellectual IP uh, taught us how to set up our own supply chain. So today, Elenita has its own fully owned subsidiary in Mexico called Villa Elenita. And through Villa Lenita, we have our own palenques with our mezcal masters and agave masters. So it's not like we just buy the uh, mezcal from somebody and just produce, right? We take a lot of ownership and a lot of pride in now producing our own 100% espadín mezcal 
in San Dionisio, Cotepec. And what we've done is we've partnered with Don Lencho and other mezcal masters to make sure that as we scale, we have enough production capabilities to keep growing at the rate we're growing, right? But this 100% Espadín mezcal is it's distilled at about, um, at the end, at 46% uh, ABB or 92 proof. And mm. it can go head to head with some of the most expensive or more premium uh, Espadín mezcales. So uh, we take a lot of pride on that. And because of how highly regulated mezcal is, you basically don't have an option. Uh, mezcal has to be produced in Mexico. And mezcal has to be produced specifically in nine regions of Mexico, Oaxaca being the most dominant one. But there's right now, there's no option to buy mezcal and export it in bulk to the U.S. and then just do a product like Elenita in the U.S. That, that is not allowed by the CRM. So, and that's one of the big reasons our entire supply chain is in Mexico, not just the mezcal. And each and every one of our cans has a hologram. So if you look at every mezcal bottle, they have a hologram from the CRM. And that's basically the CRM stamp of approval that you are a clean mezcal, a certified artisanal mezcal. And that is very important to keep the quality and that there are no like copy products. Yeah, that that's, right. a, that's a hologram that's with a QR code. Um, but yeah, obviously cool. logistically not easy to do that. We can't uh, like uh, place every single sticker in every wow. single one so, of the cans, but again, it. It, it shows and demonstrates how much pride we take into actually being, uh, I think, the only RTD or canned beverage in the world that is the spirit is fully certified. That's amazing. Do you think that you guys will ever expand into having just the Mezcal itself? Or are you, is that, again, you don't have to say if it's, you know, something you guys want to keep on the DL, but I could see, it, you know, if you guys have taken such pride and ownership that eventually one day you'd hopefully want to share that with the rest yeah, of us. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a great question. And, and we obviously get that a lot from uh, all of our partners, um, on-premise, off-premise accounts, but also uh, distributors, right? But I think right now what we saw and through a lot of research was there are already more than 500 brands of Mezcal out there in the market. And they all run into these same problems that I previously mentioned, mm -hmm. right? So right now we want to focus all of our resources into the uh, Elenita concept in a can of sparkling mezcal but then as eventually once a brand has a strong foothold I think we will have a, a, a more visible or easier path forward to launch an actual bottle of mezcal but the focus will be for the short term and mid term at least mm -hmm. in what we think is a winning product right it, 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 the winning formula to actually expand the mezcal market beyond the limitations that it currently had with its uh, formal format. No, that makes sense. Can you share, I know you talked a little bit about the um, taste testing and things like that, as far as like the flavor profiles. Um, I have had, like I said, all four, the cucumber lime basil is my absolute favorite of all of them. Um, there's just something about it where I drink it. It's it's as if somebody had made me the cocktail like that. I, it, all of them are very impressive. The girls in the office love the Paloma. Um, yeah. What inspired you to utilize these? Was there anything, I know you said traditionally these were cocktails that were made, um, but was there anything special that went into why you decided on these, these pairings specifically with Mezcal or, um, you know, just in general? Yeah, basically our goal um, with Elenita was to give the consumer the perfect balance of something that's mezcal forward, but also highly sessionable. So that was the goal since, since the beginning is how can we make mezcal um, something that can go nationwide and can go to a lot more volume and to a lot more people. And that was by making the mezcal, yes, forward, you can identify mezcal, but also be so drinkable, right? That even people that have never heard of mezcal before and like have no idea what mezcal is, when they drink it, they enjoy Elenita. And as we were doing a lot of this testing, we saw which flavors paired best with mezcal, with a sparkling mezcal and in a can. So that was a, a big part of it. The other part of it was the Elenita brand is a lot or all about curiosity, right? We say, 
freedom from the known. So we wanted to have combinations along with a mezcal that pushed the consumer a little bit farther. So the, the strawberry mule, instead of just having a, a mezcal mule, take it a little, a little bit farther, farther and go with a, a strawberry mezcal mule. And then the passion fruit paloma, the same. Instead of just doing a mezcal paloma, doing a mezcal passion fruit paloma. Pineapple jalapeno, the spiciness, cucumber lime basil, like three ingredients, more complexity. So big part of the flavors was, as I said, uh, having the perfect balance between mezcal forward and highly sessionable, which is key. Mm -hmm. Number two was having these flavors that aligned with a brand in terms of complexity, curiosity, adventure. And finally, it was very important that these were uh, research-wise um, these flavors are some of the fastest growing and more most more popular flavors, both on premise and in retail. So those three components uh, made us focus really strongly in these four and uh, probably having a, a, a seasonal uh, flavor come out for the holidays or New Year's. Well, I'm super intrigued. Do you have any um, ideas on what that might look like? Not yet. Uh, we're, Not yet. We're, we're working hard on it, but uh, it's, there's a lot of potential opportunities. No, I can. Um, I mean, I'm going to guess pumpkin spice has got to be in there somewhere. I feel like everybody <laughs> does something. Can you imagine a pumpkin spice mezcal? With mezcal. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that I don't know if that's on the on the block, but it would not shock me. Um, no, we'll I mean, try it. Are, yeah. I mean, try it. See what they say. I've been stunned at the the types of things that come out with a pumpkin spice flavor. Um, do you foresee expanding beyond these specific flavors aside from the seasonal? Or do you think that these are going to be the core and then the seasonals will pop in and out depending on time of year? Right now, again, we're, we're a pretty young company. It's only mm -hmm. been uh, almost 15 months since we launched our, our first two flavors, which was a cucumber lime basil, and the pineapple jalapeno. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. now having our full portfolio of four, it means the world to us. This is a huge accomplishment. Now we get mm -hmm. to show people what the real uh, bandwidth of what Elenita has to offer, right? With a mm -hmm. cucumber lime basing being only two grams of sugar, a little bit more smoky, but a great mm -hmm. cucumber flavor to cool you down. Then the pineapple jalapeno at the other end of the spectrum with a more spice and sweet and bold flavor. And then in between a little bit more sweet, the passion fruit paloma with that bitterness of the grapefruit. And then the strawberry meal with a little bit more sweetness and tropicality with the, with the strawberry, right? So we feel very comfortable right now with the four flavors we have. And then a seasonal that it can be a test. And if it really does well, which uh, we, we think it will, then we can think about keeping it and keep rolling out more flavors. But I think for at least the next year, two years, these four flavors and some seasonal ones will be our focus. We also have an eight pack variety pack that has two mm -hmm. cans of each flavor. And that one has been flying off the, off the shelves just because it gives consumer the ch consumers a chance to try all of our flavors. No, I think that's great. And I think it's smart to do it that way. I think, um, you know, being able to focus on, on these four and, um, you know, when we talk about supply chain as well, you know, you guys have set it up in Mexico. So we, we often see um, with some new products, right, that they, and not necessarily, I'm not necessarily saying this happens with us, but it's all of a sudden like the idea gets, gets so exciting and it's doing so well that you start popping out all these new flavors and it doesn't get a chance to build the true traction. And I think this is a brand where um, our customers will be able to see that, you're going to want this to, to, for the longevity. And so um, I, I love yes. that plan. And I think you definitely see uh, both of your business mindset in that and rolling it out the right way. So yeah. we appreciate that from a distributor perspective. Um, you know, it's obviously you said you guys have only been around for about 15 months. Um, and we've talked about, you know, from uh, the RTD standpoint, obviously there's no other sparkling mezcals that I've ever seen. So clearly it's, it separates itself on that. And I think also the quality that's in the bottle. When it comes to our on-premise and our off-premise partners who are looking at their stores and even for their menus, how do you share with them the best way to lay, best ways to use Elanita within their various accounts? Is it, you know, pour it 
as a cocktail? Do you want it in the can? Is it something that they should have in their coolers? What What do you feel? What are you seeing work well um, in other states that you guys have launched? Yeah, well, I'll start with the on premise, uh, just because there's more options. Obviously, on premise. First, we always like to say like Elenita is best served ice cold and then drink it out of the can. Right, so that's that's how like it was meant to be uh, had produced uh, with that in mind. But like we also know a lot of on-premise accounts like they don't want to have something just the, the more formal ones. We know like the more fast casual like cans uh, is is actually an option. The more formal ones, the can again you like to have a glass. So we say. Again, have it ice cold. It's a lot like a beer, right? a lot like a beer. Mm -hmm. You want to drink Elenita always ice cold. If you want to serve it um, in a glass, then make sure the, the can is ice cold. Serve it in the glass. And then what we like to say is don't pour it all. Uh, leave like um, mm -hmm. one quarter still in the Elenita can and leave it by the glass so that people can be exposed to the Elenita brand, to the warm, uh, the warm colors and a little bit more and learn about the product with a can uh, in front of them. And then finally, if you want to pour Elenita over ice, then at that point, we really encourage uh, some of our partners to add a garnish. So for the cucumber lime basil, really easy, add a little bit of, of lime or a wedge of lime that can really pop up that citrus, that um, lime flavor, because when you pour it over ice, that really does dilute uh, the flavor. And mm -hmm. when you try or if you've tried Elenita before, it's subtle, right? It, it's not a full-on cocktail. It's not high in sugar, high in flavors. It's more a sessionable um, RTD, right? Right. So if you pour it over ice, add a, a garnish with a pineapple jalapeno. We like to add a, a rim job with uh, tajin or something spicy. And then jalapeno, if you have in, in your kitchen, add a little bit of jalapeno to add to that spiciness. And then similar with the strawberry mule and the passion fruit paloma. When you pour it over ice, add a garnish so that the flavor doesn't get lost in the ice. And then uh, for off-premise or retail, it's we like to be merchandise best, obviously in the cold box and then outside the, the cold box by other successful RTDs like High Noon, uh, like Ranch Rider Spirits. But um, also we love our impact displays. We have a Wayfinder with a huge Mezcal sign and then uh, a lot of our assets and stacking Elenitas around it really helps, obviously, for the consumer to actually see Elenita and uh, grab the four packs. No, that's so smart. And for, um, for all of our customers that are watching, if you have any questions about point of sale or assets that are available to you, definitely reach out to your sales rep. You can shoot us a DM. Um, we can let you know what's available in your market. And um, if it's not, uh, readily available right then, um, we can at least walk you through the process to help um, get those items to your stores and your accounts. Um, I know you're in Georgia and Tennessee. What other markets are you guys in? So our our first market was actually California. Um, California was, uh, again, Jordan and I, as I've said, didn't come from this industry. So <laughs> when we started, we wanted to make sure we kind of had gained some street cred, right? We We wanted to do this first on our own to the extent possible before actually approaching larger distributors, larger partners, larger retailers. So we started self-distributing in California. Um, mm -hmm. And what that meant was it was just Jordan and myself going door to door to liquor stores, grocery stores, restaurant bars and hand selling Elenita to gain some traction. We, we got up to about 150 accounts that way. And after that was after like six, seven months, most of which like 90% of those were through COVID. So we had to take wow. the, the executive decision of saying, even through COVID, we masked up, gloved up and kept hitting accounts. Uh, but we wanted to make sure we, we kept growing with Elenita. And after we saw that success with Jordan and I kind of self-distributing, that's when we decided, okay, let's start approaching tier one uh, distributors in the states that we want to go to. The first one that we launched um, with a distributor was Texas. So we, we launched Texas, was a huge success. And off of that, that's when um, we started talking with Empire. Uh, we won an award in 2020 called uh, from BevNet called uh, the best spirits product of 2020. And through that, we started uh, chatting with Empire. And that's when we decided 
hey, let's launch Tennessee and Georgia. Um, mm -hmm. I think our, our number one criteria to launch a market or a state is we want to make sure we're aligned with the best distributor in that state, mm -hmm. right? Because we know how uh, important that is to actually succeed and to actually get to where we want to go with Elenita. Well, we appreciate you saying that. And for us, it's always about the, the products that, um, that really are more than just the, the brand itself, right? It's, it's what you guys have put into it. I'm, I, when you're talking about going into the, um, uh, in COVID and selling out of your car and things like that, it takes me back to the stories of when Boston beer was first beginning the Sam Adams beer. It, it really, I, I know they were doing a lot of that too. And so um, we appreciate what you guys have done and the passion that you've put into this. And we are all about partners and um, just really taking on brands that we feel like fit those same values. So we appreciate the fact that you guys chose us. Um, obviously we are really excited. We love the product. Um, it is delicious. I know you guys have some, some marketing campaigns that are coming up. Do you want to touch base on what some people might be seeing in the markets um, in Tennessee and Georgia? Yes. Uh, so Cinco de Mayo is coming up and uh, we're making sure that uh, we're supporting all of our accounts, both on premise and off premise. So we're going to be doing a lot of demos in off-premise accounts and a lot of Cinco de Mayo activations uh, with a lot of our, our new partners on-premise. So we're calling that campaign Elenita Feels Like and everybody kind of understanding what Elenita feels to them. Um, as an example, for me, my hashtag would be Elenita Feels Like enjoying a hectic dinner with my childhood friends in Mexico City. Um, you know, after this long time that I haven't seen them or we haven't been able to travel or, or get together with, with a lot of friends. It's what does Elenita feel like to you in this Cinco de Mayo coming up? But we're having a lot of uh, events that we'll be publishing in our Instagram account. Nicole, our brand manager, has done a, an amazing job leading this campaign. And it's not only across Georgia and Tennessee, also Texas and California. And it's our, our first like um, multi-state campaign we've ever done but uh hopefully you all get to uh see where the events are going to be where we're going to be tasting and you get to experience this campaign we're going to have a lot of um free food we're going to have a lot of elenitas obviously and also polaroids a lot of polaroid pictures i'm really excited about it i will say when um, we were able to meet nicole she's great and um talk about some of these campaigns and um the marketing team was sending um text messages back and forth to each other about um, Elanita feels like, and then areas of town. Um, for for us, we are obviously based out of Atlanta, so um, we were thinking about all over the state, just the different places. And I know you guys have really cool bandanas. Um, you may see a picture. Yep, yeah, you've got one. Um, they they're very cool. All of the the point of sale and the things that you guys have done, I think, is just it's outstanding. It's um, it's. It, it just lines up with exactly what's in the, what's in the bottle. So um, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today and doing our first rooms. Um, I, I love the tagline, unearth your spirit, and just the idea of where Elanita came from. I'm going to share that story with everyone. Um, if you are just jumping on now, you definitely want to watch it from the beginning um, to hear just even where the name came from. It's, it's such a beautiful story of, um, of really kind of coming into your own to a certain extent and kind of, yeah. um, you know, just truly being who you are when you're comfortable, right? And with your friends and your family, which I love. Is there anything that you would like to leave with our audience um, before we go um, about Elanita or about kind of what you guys are looking for or just what you hope to, to do with a brand beyond just uh, have amazing liquid? Yeah, we, we're definitely focusing in our communities. We are what, what we like to say a hyper local brand. Every mm -hmm. market we launch, we take very seriously. And uh, as I'm sure um, uh, Empire knows by now and, uh, and our partners, we are not mm -hmm. in a land grab strategy of we just want to launch everywhere and be everywhere. Every market we've launched has been very strategic and we want to support our markets with tastings with events with making sure there's a community around elenita so if you have ideas if you want elenita 
um, at your account. If you want Elenita to be doing an event, to be part of the community, please reach out to us through Instagram, through our uh, emails, LinkedIn, anywhere. We are really focusing on building that hyper local brand and making sure that all the cities, um, counties, towns that we're in actually feel that Elenita presence. And that's why we're taking our time. We want to make sure we can actually do that with our entire team and our limited resources in each of the markets we're in and grow in a more organic and more handleable manner, uh, if that word exists. I, I think it does. And I think it makes complete sense. And that's what you want to see in a brand that you want to have longevity out of. You know, it's, um, I think it's, it's just like in the restaurant community or in, when you're building a new business. I've listened to a lot of entrepreneurial podcasts and they're like, doesn't matter how many start, there's only a few that are going to actually see it for the long term. And so I think you guys have definitely built in a timeline and um, that's, that's really just going to give you success. And so we, um, we, again, are so thankful to be able to carry you and um, to have you in both our um, Georgia and our Tennessee markets. And I just wish you the best of luck and hope that we get to see you um, in person and share a cocktail together, um, a can of Alanita together. And yeah. <laughs> um, for sure, we'd love to have you on again, especially as you guys um, get ready to announce the seasonal once that kind of comes to fruition. And we know we would love to have you on again. And then, um, you know, potentially maybe even live from Mexico would be phenomenal as well. Yeah, we'd love to. <laughs> I, I go to Mexico uh, every month at least uh, to make sure our, all of our production goes goes smoothly. But uh, thanks for having me. And uh, we'd love to be back here anytime and, and love talking about mezcal elenita and uh, this is truly a passion of mine well, we really appreciate you taking the time and we look forward to speaking with you again thank you so much miguel bye bye everyone <laughs> bye guys